Stravinsky Institution. I represent Team Russia Orange. And now I would like to present you my solution to the problem. What a bomb. At first, I would like to tell you the task. A banner filled with water is thrown from a light shade. How far will the water splash after the banner hits the ground? What parameters influence the water splashing? The how? At first, I would lay I would like to say something about how we understand the problem. We used balance of the same time and type in all experiments. We made 10 treats for each experimental point to make our statistics. Here you can see the pack, uh, which, which contains 20 balance. We used about 25 of such bags. So, now let's say something about why it grows. Uh, that in the task we can see that the ball should be thrown. But for experiment, for controlling the experiment, it is easily that it should be dropped, the balloon. And really, from the energy conservation law, you can see that it is equivalent. If we will throw the drop, or throw the ball, balloon, or uh, we will drop it from a larger height. So, I think that the problem is quite difficult for only theoretical solution. So, I would, uh, so I would base my theory on experiment. And at first, I would like to tell you about my experimental techniques. One of the most important parameters of the uh, splashing water is the droplet size because it uh, from the energetic concentration you can easily see that it influences on the distance that the droplets drive for measuring the droplet size we used a paper sheet standing vertically the droplets fly from the bursting balloon and there are, uh, and there were spots on it. Here you can see the spots. Of course, the size of spots isn't equal to the size of droplets. So we should to calibrate our setup. For calibration, we use a syringe. We fixed the droplet size and we measured the radius of spots on the paper sheet. So then, we should measure the spots. There are a lot of spots on the sheet. So, we used Wolfram America to measure it. We used the common morphological components to distinguish the spots. And then, we measured those sizes automatically. And, of course, we should measure the flight distance. We dropped our balloon from large head on the paper sheet. We used colored water, but the color, but there was a little concentration of color, so it do, didn't influence neither on the uh, liquid viscosity nor on its precipitation. So we dropped the balloon on the paper sheet. There were rays, of course, on the paper sheet, the, ray, uh, the traces of droplets and we measure the length of those traces. Of course, each droplet applied different distance. So, we made the histogram for the distances. As you can see, those histograms have a has a maximum value. So, we measured those value and we said that it's some characteristic length some characteristic distance, the droplet fly. One of the most important parameters which influence on how the droplets fly is the tension characteristics of the balloon rubber. Of, and, uh, on this ten, and those tension characteristics, as you can easily see, corresponds to the related pressure in the balloon. So, we should measure the, the dependence of the relative pressure inside the balloon on its 
volume. Here you can see the dependence. As you can see, it has strongly animal character. So, let's first observe the case. More easier, more easy, when the bow is burst by the needle. Here you can see the slow motion, the slow motion video of how the process occurs. As you can see, the rub moves. For five minutes. And the droplets fly. Now let's say about say something about the physical origin of droplets. Those physical origin is shared instability. The piece of lattice scratched the one at the bottom, uh, and uh, there are waves behind it, and the droplets fly. We can take analogy with calum Helmholtz instability. We measure, the, we measure the distribution of droplet size. We use the distribution peak test, and we can see that uh, the Q squared test for log normal distribution is about no, uh, 0 .9, 0 0.9. So, with, so it's uh, really with high precision log normal distribution of droplet sizes. Here you can see the distribution of droplets by sizes with different trials of balance. And what is the physical? What is the physical origin of those distributions? We can see it from the literature. We can see that the multiplicative pipe of division can be physical origin of log normal distribution. Here you can see one of the most uh, interesting dependence that we get. This is the correlation between size of droplets and the pressure in the balloon. You can see that both of those dependencies have extremum and it is approximately in one point. So we can see that the uh, radius of droplets have strong correlation with the tension characteristics of the rubber. So we can roughly estimate the characteristic radius of droplets uh, from simple consideration and those formula have good qualitative agreement with our experiment. Now let's consider the first, the second case. While I'm hitting the ground, here you can see our slow-mo video, how the droplets, uh, how the for uh, how it occurs. And here you can see the distribution of droplet size. You can see some interesting maximums on the histogram for sizes. So we can see that this be, that can be the cause of the, uh, that can uh, take us to idea that there can be two origins, that can be another origin of droplets uh, for the bottom hit on the ground. And we can see that there are capillary-like base on the balloon when it hits, and those capillary like waves deforms, and uh, they are up, and they transforms into the droplets. Uh, we can use the literature, the uh, article of how I'm alone, and, uh, the, and those uh, estimations are, and we can see here those estimations. Now let's consider the length of flight. Uh, you can see uh, that we can use simple energetic considerations for calculating the length of flight. We use the energy conservation law and we can, uh, we can uh, draw it the simple, uh, the simple semi-empirical formula which we can use to calculate length of flight. Here you can see the correlation between our theory and our experiment. You can see the dependence of flight distance of droplets from the radius of battle, and now you can see, uh, as you can see, there is quite good correlation between theory and experiment. And here you can see the dependence of flight distance of the radius of battle. Uh, no, not from the radius of battle, but from the head, the heads, uh, from which we draw the battle. So we can also see that there is quite good correlation between our theory and practice. Now let's go to the conclusions. So we reveal two mechanisms of forming the droplets. We investigate the distribution of droplet sizes and get log normal distribution. And we construct a semi-empirical model for calculating the distance of flight, which gets quite good agreement with our experiment. Thank you for your attention. So, first of all, we'd like to say some positive as uh, aspects of your presentation. We liked how you um, studied the different distances and how they distributed. 
and how you presented the uh, Instagram for distribution of distances. We thought that was uh, interesting also uh, when you tried to explain the maxima, the different maxima. Um, and also the droplet uh, size study. The slow motion videos you uh, showed us were also very enlightening for understanding how the model works. Uh, how the, um, not the model, but the, um, the mechanics of the, uh, of the process works. Uh, your statistics on those droplet experiments are very good. So that's uh, something we would like to um, um, remark on. Uh, however, we have some critics also to, uh, to uh, say. First of all, you didn't uh, study the effect of the width of, of plastic uh, on the balloon. And we, what we found was that that uh, had a great, great impact on the, the results. Secondly, uh, your theoretical model is, um, could be re refined by uh, to, to, uh, be, to basically estimate the parameters that, 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 that you um, introduced because there are some numbers that just are mentioned but uh, you never say how, how you're calculating them. Um, also what we had from, what we saw from our experiments is that the dispersion in this kinds, kinds of uh, experiments is very big. However, uh, we didn't see too many data for that, so that's another thing we, that we would like to say, uh, discuss. Um, and in your theoretical model, there is, uh, to our thought, there is no clear relationship between the, um, the parameters that you're, you were studying and the expected result. You, you just showed the, the graphic but never kind of a, yeah, the, a, 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 like a power law or something. What, what does it fit to? Um, no. And finally, can, can we pose questions that we still have? Uh, you can, but she can answer until the time is done. So okay, sure. Good. So, um, what we saw was that the direction of the splash was dependent on the falling angle of the balloon itself. So basically, if it fell like this, it was not the same as if it fell, if it fell uh, on the other side. Did you see the same effect? And can you explain it? That's, wait, uh, I'll just uh, read the three questions. Secondly, uh, we know that kinematic equations from uh, for range and maximal height are independent of the mass of the particle in uh, in question. Why would you then mention the mass that it, that came uh, from the uh, water droplets? And um, the, theory, uh, the the plot you showed showed uh, theoretical lines that were always above of the experimental data you the, you gathered. Why is that? Can I tell? Yeah. Okay. So just just before we start, uh, I, I would just like to remind you two points that I have forgotten to mention before. You are allowed to bring notes to one of the speakers of your team during the discussion, right? When someone is only presenting, they is all alone, but when the, dis the like the discussion doesn't start right now, you can bring a piece of paper to your team. And that's the first thing. Second thing, uh, you, have, you have mentioned some points that will be discussed. You have five minutes for the discussion, and I will not interrupt you if you get stuck in a report. It's you have to see when the discussion is going in the wrong way and change from the focus. Right. So unless you really fight with your hand, I will let you continue. That being said, you can proceed to the discussion. Thank you. Now, uh, can I begin uh, one specific question? Because it's a uh, it's uh, The answer would be chess. Uh, really, uh, the most interesting uh, the volume of the ball. Because the volume uh, the volume of the volume of the bottom influence on how the the rubber is changed and uh, how the rubber is changed have uh, uh, it's it's very important parameter because it influence uh, on it influence on the size of the drop. I answer your question. I answer your question. Um, not really, because what I, what I mean is not the the mass of the balloon itself, but what? the mass of the droplets that the splash. You you basically well, you studied the, the size of them, but 
and try to relate them to the range, they, to the distance they travel. But I <coughs> know that kinematic equations do not include the mass. Yes, I see. Uh, so. I uh, sorry, I uh, really, uh, there, uh, there is fixed energy that uh, comes uh, to the droplets when they fly. But really, not all the mass of the liquid, not all volume of the liquid flies with the droplets. There is only one layer. But one layer of the droplets. Let's fly. So I remind you that if you want to switch to a new computer to show something, this can be done with a small box. Just the switch. button goes on your side. Okay, right? If, if you need it. Uh, really? uh, no, I don't need uh, Maybe I would need it for the answer of the next question. Uh, so, maybe. No, I should. You can see this is the energy, and this transforms to this volume, and uh, uh, this volume depends on the size of the droplets and how and what will be the volume. Uh, it uh, will influence the distance on which the droplets fly. Acoustic volume. Maybe I should better write the formula. Yeah. Did you understand me, or...? I mean, just write the formula and say it later, I think that's what you mean. <coughs> uh, but even so, uh, what we observe and what we know of conservation of energy is that the, the losses due to tension are independent of, uh, of velocities. So, like, when, when you try to to include velocity in, in those uh, aspects, then there is no way of doing it. I don't know how to explain myself about that. Mm -hmm. It's uh, here is a sign. Uh, so the, we can roughly estimate and the number of droplets as the Uh, there would be uh, less droplets to uh, the less energy to each drop. 